the first civil Renaissance palace in Rome, one of the buildings made with the marble of the Colosseum, a secret garden where to escape the chaos of the city. What's this place? This is Palazzo Venezia. Ciao everyone and welcome back to Rome. Today we're going to show you a hidden gem which is right next to one of the main squares of Rome, Piazza Venezia. We are in fact going to enter Palazzo Venezia, this palace, which is one of the palaces that frames this piazza. But what is Palazzo Venezia? We're not going to go inside by walking around the corner and entering by the main entrance. But you need to know that Palazzo Venezia is the first civil Renaissance architecture in Rome. The story of this palace of Palazzo Venezia started when the Cardinal Pietro Barbo, who came from Venice, in 1451 became titular cardinal of the Church of St. Mark, which today is right behind this palace. The cardinal thought this residency was too small and humble, so he decided to expand it. So he built this new palace, which was called Palazzo Barbo, from his name. Some years later, the cardinal became pope. Pope Paul II. As a pope, he expanded the palace, which then became the Papal Palace, and in the following years, the palace kept expanding towards its extension today. But what's there to see in Palazzo Venezia? As you enter the main entrance, on the right you'll find a ticket office. So you get your ticket and the first thing you'll see is this. This is the grand staircase, which leads to the main floor upstairs. Here you'll find a door opening on one of the porticos facing the Giardino Grande, the great garden. This is a garden that you can access for free without the need to buy a ticket. It is a really nice escape from the bustle of this area of Rome where you can sit and relax surrounded by trees, ancient ruins and monumental fountains. But there is another balcony which is even more important and monumental which is the Loggia of the Blessings. Let's go and have a look. The Pope could access this loggia directly from his private apartments. He would look down and give his blessings to the crowds gathered in front of the church of St. Mark, which is right below our feet right now. But there is an incredible detail about this loggia. The travertine stones that make these arches were taken from none other than the Colosseum and the Theatre of Marcellus. It sounds crazy to us today, but this is what many popes and rich families of Rome have been doing for centuries. They've been stripping off the ancient ruins of their materials and reusing those materials to build new things like palaces and churches. And from this balcony you can see an unusual point of view over the Vittoriano on Piazza Venezia. But bear in mind that when the Pope was in here, the Vittoriano was not there because that was added only at the end of the 1800s. Now let's walk back inside. We will walk through a series of rooms which are for the most part empty. And these were the rooms of the Pope's apartment. And it was in these very rooms that Paul II kept his collection of carved hearthstones, coins and jewels. And this is what Paul II looked like. You need to imagine that Paul II loved his collection so much that he used to walk around the palace at night to admire his own treasures under the candlelights. And because of the candlelights which were visible from the windows from outside, rumors were circulating that there were ghosts and demons living in this palace. In this room you'll see the family emblem of the Pope Paul II of the Barbo family, the lion with a blue background and this yellow stripe on top. This used to be the bedroom of Paul II. In this room you'll also notice these beautiful terracotta floors which were made in the beginning of the 1900s so these are not the original floors of the Pope. Next we'll find this fresco depicting one of the key events of Palazzo Venezia. This is in fact Pope Pius IV that donated Palazzo Venezia to the ambassador of the Republic of Venice in the 1500s. This room was used by the Pope to welcome his guest. Look at the wooden ceilings, they were the originals of the 1400s. Here you also find some terracotta money boxes from the 1600s. This is where the Pope used to keep his collection of coins and medals. Let's head down to one of the most impressive rooms of Palazzo Venezia, the Sala del Mappamondo, the room of the world map. It was called this way because there used to be a huge world map onto one of the longer walls, which has unfortunately gone lost. 
This has been the reception hall for the Pope Paul II, as well as for the following popes who lived here. And centuries later, also for the fascist dictator Benito Mussolini, who used to work in this room, which also features the famous balcony from where he used to address the crowds. Then, after World War II, this room was used for the museum exhibitions, and today is part of the route of the regular visit. The incredible features of this room are the optical illusions of the painted columns onto the walls and the beautiful mosaics on the floors. The mosaics on the floor depict the myth of the rape of Europe, as well as the zodiac signs. The mosaics were made in the 1900s and they were inspired by the thermal baths of Neptune of the ancient coastal town of Ostia Antica. The next room is another room that the Pope wanted as his reception hall, having in mind Palazzo Venezia as a valid alternative to the Vatican Palace. Today there's no decorations left from that time, from the original setting. The floors and the frescoes that you see today were made in the early 1900s. This room hosted legendary concerts. In fact, even Mozart played in here, as well as Gioacchino Rossini. It is called the Room of the Battles because of the circular discs painted on the walls mentioning the battles that Italy fought during World War I. So far we saw the rooms of Pope Paul II, but the route continues because after Paul II, other cardinals expanded the palace with their own rooms. For example, here we have the room of the Cardinal Cibo, which today houses the art collection of the Museum of Palazzo Venezia. And then look at this room. This is the room of the banker Altoviti, who was the banker of Pope Julius III. The room is decorated with frescoes with the stories of the goddess Ceres, the goddess of earth and the months of the year. These frescoes were made in the 1500s by none other than Giorgio Vasari. In the middle of the room we can find a bronze bust of Pope Pius V. And in the following rooms we see other collections, including a collection of weapons coming from different places in the world. And look at these helmets, imagine how difficult it will feel to fight with one of them over your head. Last but not least, we end our visit with the secret garden of the Pope. This is the so-called Palazzetto. This structure used to be on the other side of the main palace where Piazza Venezia is today. But then imagine, it was entirely moved in here, stone by stone, to make space for the construction of the new Piazza Venezia and the Vittoriano Monument at the end of the 1800s. The Pope had direct access to the Palazzetto and his secret garden from his private apartments, and this is where he kept a lot of his collections too. The visit of Palazzo Venezia ends in the Giardino Grande, the first garden that we saw at the beginning from the balcony. We hope you enjoyed this little tour of Palazzo Venezia. This is just a short preview, there's so much more to explore in here, but you'll have to come and see everything else in person. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and enable the notifications to get more insights of Rome of the Beaten Path. Tell us what would you like to see in the next video. Thank you for watching and ciao!